So you train some model and you get some amount of performance. So accuracy, F1 score, AOC, stuff like that. Then you train another model and you get a bit better. The first question you will always get if you show these results is, is the difference statistically significant? In this video, I will show you how to answer this with bootstrap intervals. So the bootstrap persampling method is a technique which is used to create a distribution of your performance metric using the exact same data you have used for training. So uh, any, any technique that is uh, called bootstrap, how it works is you have uh, some data and then you're going to uh, sample this data randomly with replacement and uh, you repeat this many times and then you can calculate some sort of metric with it. So th those are called bootstrap. Here we're going to use bootstrap presampling to create a distribution of the, the performance metric. So uh, disclaimer, this, this can get computationally intensive, so I suggest doing this at the end completely of your analysis, um, since you will be running your machine learning pipeline over and over again. So the idea is simple, you take your data and you create a bootstrap sample by randomly sampling with replacement the original data set. You use the bootstrap sample to do your whole machine learning analysis, this will give you a performance metric and then you repeat this process n amount of time to create a distribution. So if you look at the pseudocode, you get your original data, um, you uh, say how many times you want to run the, the bootstrap resampling method, you, this resolution is up to you. Um, the more you do it, the longer it will take. Um, then what you do for each iteration is you resample with replacement, you get your bootstrap data, and then you take this bootstrap data to run your full machine learning pipeline. You're gonna get the performance out of this, and then you're gonna create your distribution using this performance. So now that you have this distribution, it is very simple to answer the question if the difference in performance is statistically significant. So what you do usually is uh, you take, let's say you want to say that this is statistically significant with p smaller than 0 0.05, you take um, the chunk of the distribution which has 95% of the, the data, um, and then if they don't overlap, you can say it's statistically significant. In this case, it's not because they do overlap, uh, in this case, the two distribution, if you take 95% of them, um, they don't overlap. So you say it's statistically significant with P smaller than 0 0.05. So this is, this is the power of this because then you can say something like this. Classifier B is X percent better than classifier A at P smaller than 0 0.05 with a bootstrap sampling of N equal 10. And this is a valid thing to do and it's statistically significant. So let's look at how this can be set up in sqlearn. Okay, so here we are in uh, this Jupyter Notebook. Uh, we're gonna look at uh, an implementation of the bootstrap interval. Um, in sqlearn, there is uh, some um, tools that you can use to uh, create this uh, sort of, uh, of distribution. However, you're gonna have to implement the bootstrap uh, method yourself. So, uh, but it's, it's super simple. So let's look at um, my setup here. I have this input file name, which is um, my data. Uh, for uh, this experiment, if we look at it, my data look like this. So I have a bunch of stuff. Those are my feature set. Um, they come from uh, some brain analysis I'm doing. I have some land value. I have to do some pre-processing. Um, so here I have my pipeline I'm creating. I'm doing a simple imputer, which I'm going to use the mean for the land value. And then I'm going to do the standard scalar and I'm going to run just a, a simple um, super vector machine. It's going to be linear. So um, to get the x and y I need, I need to go through the pre-process uh, function that I have uh, abstracted somewhere else. Uh, but uh, in a nutshell, what it will do is it will give me those uh, guys. Um, so I'm going to run the analysis on people with musculoskeletal um, disease. So this is it's not that important, but this is what's happening. And then um, I get this. Um, uh, this uh, data frame. So this is what I'm going to do and then I'm going to call my bootstrap interval function with my x, y and my group. Um, I give my pipe instead of my classifier and then I'm going to say my number of resample and the p-value I want. Uh, here um, the group is important because I'm doing a leave one subject out cross-validation uh, but this is just abstracted in the classification. So let's look at the bootstrap interval now right over here so uh, it's super simple it's the same for loop as we saw before um, what I'm doing is I'm uh, I'm doing the resampling over here using 
uh, SQL learn resample. And um, what it does is you give a matrix, uh, something like you can give whatever. You give either n dimensional array, another n dimensional array, another n dimensional array, whatever. And it will give you a resample of these uh, randomly with um, with uh, resample. And uh, it will give you um, the same size as all of those, but resample it. So this is what I have. I have to do them all in, in the same uh, function otherwise the x and y will not be matching anymore and the group I needed to match always because uh, the group says um, uh, will be useful for the leave one subject out cross validation so that's it and then what I do is I do a classify loso this is just my my whole classification scheme I put it in the function and I abstract it over here um, and I need to give it the x a y a group right to do the leave one subject out uh, properly and then I give my classifier, which is um, given over here. This will give me uh, some accuracies. And then what I do is I'm going to put the accuracies in the distribution over here. Um, and I just give the mean because this will give me all the accuracy for each participant. But I just need the mean for that. Um, now, um, since I need the interval, right, this will return some interval, um, which will be useful to see if two things are or two classifier overlapping. Um, so what I do is I sort them and then I do um, take the lower and upper index to uh, match my p-value that I need over here. So this will basically uh, encompass the 95% uh, usually of the distribution. And this is what I give back. I give back the, um, the lower index and the upper index of the accuracy distribution, the value in there. And I give back this thing, the whole distribution and the accuracy. Um, so let's run this for um, just 10 for now. Right, so it's done. Um, let's insert the cell just below and look at the accuracy distribution. Right, I uh, see um, this is what I get with this. It's a pretty, uh, a pretty not good classifier. Um, and I get like 49% here, I got 52, 55, whatever, 62%. Uh, so this is uh, how bad my classifier can be and this is how good it can be. Um, and if I look at the interval, it looks like this. So um, yeah, and I don't have that much uh, to do a p-value uh, correctly. Um, so I will need to put more, but you've seen it took a while um, so if you have, let's say, if you want to, to have something that is that is relatively well, um, uh, with a relatively good resolution, you're going to have to have at least a thousand. Um, but to do that, it will take a long time. So the, the one of the cool things you could do with, with this method is, um, since it's um, each iteration of the follow-up are completely uh, separate, uh, it's really easy to parallelize uh, with multiprocessor in Python. So that's it. And then what you can do is create this distribution of the accuracy and you can get um, some good idea about what um, the classifier can do. Uh, Usually uh, what happens is if you have a lot, a lot of data, um, uh, the, the bootstrap interval will get smaller and smaller. So if you have a rare, like uh, tons of data, like a million uh, data point, uh, the bootstrap interval uh, method doesn't really make sense anymore. Um, it, it's, it's mostly uh, used for a smaller sample size um, in order to say if something is statistically significant. If let's say you have a billion data point and you get X percent of improvement um, on, the, on, on, this, on the data set using a different classifier, it is kind of um, expected that uh, they, it will be statistically significant. You don't have to necessarily run bootstrap interval for that. All right, so that's it. Bootstrap resampling is a good tool to have at your disposition, especially if you have a small dataset. So I hope this helped and let me know in the comment section if you have any questions. Have a good week.